I've got a small piece of cardboard here and I'm just going to slide it under here to be on top of those uh, screw posts because I don't want my card grounding out. That would be bad, especially if there's any voltage where it's making contact with the cards. If I can get the old piece of cardboard in here. Okay, there we go. So it's on top of the screw post here and here. You know it's not grinding out anything on the card. There's nothing over here except the PCI slot and there's one plastic screw post and it's not going to ground anything out. So nothing's touching. It's not going to ground out. We're going to connect the cable. Cable's connected. Going to plug her up. Okay. Give her some power. Okay, I hear the monitor like it's firing up. So it is getting power. And we're waiting for the tone. But as you're going to find out, you're never going to get a tone. That tone should tell you that everything's okay. It's initialized the video card and all, and it's booting up. But uh, it's just going to sit there. And uh, as far as I know, it's, it's because the circuit board is expecting a Voodoo 2 card. And it's a Voodoo 3 card. It's a totally different chipset. And whatever's built into the programming and all, it's just like with a computer game, if you've got a driver loaded for a Voodoo 2 card, it's not going to work with a Voodoo 3 card. And uh, this Voodoo 3 card, you know, it's sitting there, it's constantly looking for the Voodoo 2, it can't find it. So the Voodoo 3 is, is not going to work, it's not going to do anything. And you can even come over here and look on the on the circuit board. And I haven't looked exactly at what it means, but if you look, let me move this wire. There's an LED there. It's like a digital, uh, it's like a clock. An LED that you know it, it usually if it's running properly and the machine's booting up, it's circling around and around. Sometimes it'll flash numbers by when it's first booting. I don't know the exact what the codes mean. I, I could look in the manual right now and tell you, but right now I think that means error, you know. And it's just constantly doing that. And it, it can't get the video started, and it's just sitting there. The hard drive's spinning, the machine's running, there's power to the monitor, but nothing's going to happen with this card in there. So we're going to cut the machine off. And we're going to take this card out right quick. I never made a video this long with this little digital camera of mine, and I don't know how good the quality is, so I've got to hurry up so I can show you the last card. Okay. I hope everything's okay. I'm not letting it rest quite as long, but taking loose the 15 pin cable, taking the Voodoo 3 2000 PCI card out carefully, and a little cardboard insulator. And I didn't unplug it this time. I probably should have. As a matter of fact, I'll do that right now. Off camera. But it's unplugged. The power's down on it. Okay. We're back over the table. We know what the original card does. We know what the Voodoo 3 does. Nothing. Now here's another Voodoo 2 made by Creative Labs. And it just happened to be a card that I took out of... Uh, my sister-in-law's computer a long time ago. She got it from a local church and it was just, I don't even know what it was doing in there actually because I know a church wasn't using 3D graphics but they must have got the system from somewhere and it had a normal 2D video card and this in there. But uh, it's got a similar chipset. It's got three 3DFX chips and then all the memory chips. Now there's a difference with this one. If you count up the chips, remember I told you two chips, if they're similar chips, uh, make one megabyte on these cards? Well, if you count all these up, you've got, I think, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and on the back, 13, 14, 15, 16. You only have 16 chips. So if you divide by two, that's eight. There's only eight megabytes on board for this card. Only eight megabytes. The original card has 10 megabytes. Well, we're about to see if that makes any difference. So here we go. Okay, we're back in the unit. Set the camera down.
And if you can see, I don't know if you can, piece of black electrical tape right there just to keep this cart from grounding out on that screw post right there. The front one lines up perfectly right here and I know that there's nothing there that's going to ground out and hurt anything. I just put that piece of electrical tape there because there's some pins coming through from some surface mount stuff and I don't want it to ground out so safety first. We're not going to use the cardboard on this one. Just a little piece of tape. Slide it in place. Plug it into the PCI slot carefully. Make sure our tape's still in place under that screw post. You don't want it to ground out. Get things in firmly. And now we've got to hook up the 15-pin uh, cord, the jumper cable, basically. It jumps it back to the main CPU board of the Vega system. Okay, it's plugged in. We're ready to test it. We've got to give it some power, so... Plugged in. Flip it on. Everything comes alive. Get around to the screen. Wait for our tone. Hey, there's our tone. We actually got a tone. That means something's going right. A little flash on the screen there. Okay, 3D effects initialize. Oh, you can't read it. Initializing disk. Done. Initializing audio done loading game and what do you know we actually have output from an old creative lab just an old leftover card from a system that I probably thought I was going to junk out and throw in the trash you know I don't know give to somebody and uh, I actually have a, a good looking display it looks just like the other card looks just like the other card at the onset now I'm going to go ahead and touch it and let it just start the intro, just so you can see. The graphics look really nice. Probably doesn't look very good on my camera, but here in person it looks really good. Okay, and I'm just going to show you something in the game right quick. i got it set on free play, so I haven't even played this game that much, so I don't know much about it as far as just playing it, you know. Now see, look, immediately, do you see there's a graphic glitch on the screen? There's more graphical glitches if you look. Okay. Now that looks normal. But we had some glitches a second ago. Some textures or something weren't loaded properly. Okay, now we're not getting anything at all whenever it showed the intro. Okay, now take a look. Look at my feet. Look around at the key and stuff. There's like squares wherever items are. And even like here these logs are supposed to be brown and they don't have any textures on them. And I think all these things are symptoms of not having enough video memory for the textures. It's not being able to store some of the textures for the game. And uh, the objects are there, I guess, but some of the textures are here. See, there's the chest. You see the way a chest looks? There's no texture applied to that 3D, you know, object. You can come up and use it, and and even what's supposed to be inside it, it looks like a flame with a big square. But that's the way a lot of things are in here when you play with this card. I think these things would be solved if you had a Voodoo 2 of probably just about any brand as long as it was PCI and it had at least 10 megs of memory. And I think most of the retail versions had 12 megs, but this one I got a hold of by Creative Labs had 8 megs. Uh, this one that they made, the Obsidian 2 that came with Gauntlet Legends, uh, it had 10 and that's kind of an oddball. I don't think there was any retail ones that you could buy with 10 megabytes. But if you got one with 12, I think it would work. And I'm going to find out soon because I'm buying one on eBay that has uh, 12 megabytes. If nobody outbids me, which I don't think anybody will, it's kind of hard to even find it. It's just one card on eBay. But uh, if I get it, it's going to be like less than 15 bucks probably. And that beats paying 50 something plus shipping for an Obsidian 2 from a guy who's got like 100 on there selling them. And he's making like 55, 60 bucks a pop plus shipping, you know. But uh, this is just an alternative in case you've just totally fried your card and haven't been able to find a replacement. You could try it and like I said, try to get one with at least 10 megs of memory, which you'd probably find a 12 megabyte card, and uh, it might work. Thanks.